Here's number three. There's a wheel A connected to a wheel C by this belt here. And it wants us to find the number of revolutions that wheel C will go through in five seconds. So to start, I'm going to write what I know. And I know that wheel A has a radius of 12 centimeters. So I'll say RA is equal to 0.12 meters. Radius C it tells us is 24 centimeters. So this would be 0.24 meters. And it tells us that wheel A increases its angular speed from rest at a uniform rate of 1.2 radians per second squared. So I know that omega naught A is going to be zero. And I know that alpha A is going to be 1.2 radians per second squared. And then I know the time, which is 5 seconds. T is going to be able to do 5 seconds. And I'm ultimately searching for this theta, which will be in radians, so we'll have to convert that at the end. This is ultimately a quantity of interest. And it tells us that this belt does not slip. And this gives us a key piece of information. It basically says that this speed that this belt is at on the edge of um, wheel A will be the same as the speed on the edge of wheel C. So the linear velocity of A will be equal to the linear velocity of C because this belt is going to be moving at the same velocity no matter which wheels it's across. Now the angular velocity will be different, but we can use the linear velocity as our you know, link in order to use the information we have from wheel A and apply it to find what we need from wheel C. To find theta C, we want to use a rotational kinetic equation. So it'll look like this. It'll be theta C is equal to omega naught CT plus one half alpha C T squared. Now omega naught C is going to be zero because it's what's released. So theta C will be equal to one half alpha C T squared. Now to find alpha, we're going to write another equation. It'll look like this. It'll be VC is equal to V naught C plus AC T. Now V naught C is going to be zero since we're released. So the VC is equal to VCT. Now if you remember we said that VC is going to be equal to VA. So I want to switch this VC for VA. It's going to be equal to VCT. Now A is going to be equal to alpha times R. I'm just going to change these divides of C. So say AC is going to be equal to alpha C, RC. So this AC is going to be equal to alpha C, RC. So VA will be equal to alpha C, RC, T. I'm going to get alpha C uh, on itself, one side. So I'm going to divide RC, T, both sides. We'll get alpha C is equal to VA over RC, T. Now to find VA, I'm going to use a translational equation for this A term here. VA is equal to V naught A, T, plus a t since a wheel a starts from rest then cross out so we'll get va is equal to uh, the translational acceleration of a times time and since we said that a is equal to alpha r we want to do the same thing as i did for c and for a so we'll get va is equal to alpha a r a times time so now I'm going to plug it into there, and we'll get theta c is equal to alpha a r a times time over r c t. The time will cancel out, and we'll get that alpha c is equal to alpha a times r a all over r c. I'm going to plug this thing in to here, so we'll get theta c is equal to one half. And this alpha C B alpha A R A over R C times T squared. So we'll get theta C is equal to alpha A R A times T squared all over two R C.
Now I'm actually going to plug in these numbers into there. Because we're going to have to do a conversion at the end. I'm going to do C is equal to alpha A is 1.2. Um, RA is 0.12. Time is 5 seconds, so it'll be 3 squared. This will be over 2 times RC is 0.24. And we get this is equal to 7.5 radians. So I'll say that's over 1 times it'll be 2 pi radians per revolution, which will ultimately be equal to 1.2 revolutions. And that is your final answer. Thank you for watching.